Hey, hey, hey. Happy Friday. You'd expect me to be, like, out on the town doing something crazy with awesome plans and all my friends, and no, I'm not. I'm sitting at home in my sweats, drinking coffee and writing and listening to music and playing Sudoku puzzles. Does that make me really pathetic? Okay, it's Friday, and we're talking about X's, the X effect, the X cycle. Hmm. Can I tell you that when I started to make this video, Love is a Battlefield came on my CD player? I think that's probably a sign. The X effect. Obviously, I've had, I've had my fair share of heartache and breakups, just like most of you have. Um, so I've had plenty of time to analyze uh, what I've called the X cycle. Uh, you break up with someone because things obviously don't work, you aren't happy, you realize you have a long laundry list of things that need to change that won't, um, and so you cut your losses, you break it off, and then all of the stages hit. At first you're angry, and you're apathetic, you know, then you're nostalgic, and then you're upset, and once you get past all of those, you know, depending on how long you were dating, then then you just kind of get to feel you again. And I think a hard, the hardest part of it is that you lose a lot of yourself, um, or you can lose a lot of yourself in a relationship, and so it takes time to find um, to find who you are alone, you know. Um, but after the stages, at some point, no matter what point that is, you get the strangest urge to go back, you know? You think you want to make amends, and you want to relive good times, and you end up being nostalgic to a point where you allow them to affect your future as well. And so you do. You go back. You make contact. And quickly you realize why you left to begin with. This is the X cycle. The reason they say hindsight is 2020 is because love is blind. When there is so much emotion packed into one small experience, you can't begin to see all aspects of it. You know, you can't see all perspectives. And even though your friends try to tell you, um, you know, there, there are a lot of things you don't notice until you step outside of it. So there's my little X cycle explanation, but. I think that if that um, I think that really relates to the second question in the being friends with your ex thing. Um, some people stay friends with all their exes. Some people cut their losses and burn the bridges while they can. Um, I, I'm somewhere in the middle. There are, are many exes that I still talk to, especially those that I had significant relationships and connections with. Um, granted, I think the biggest key that people seem to miss, especially if you have the same group, if you hang out and all the same friends, or if you have the same life, you've got to make distinctions. You've got to set aside some time, no matter how much time that needs to be, and find you. Define you and your life and what you're about, and they can be a part of that, but not all of it. Um, you know, you got you got to complete the grieving process. You you got to be sad about it. You've got to establish boundaries. You've got to realize that you want them in your life for a certain purpose, and that that purpose is, you know, more so platonic than than it's been in the past. Because once you reach a certain level with someone, it's really hard to go back. Really, really hard to go back. So it, it takes some time. Um, and then the first question. Um, about histories and mementos and whatnot is 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 a two-sided coin, you know. Of course, you don't want someone that you've been dating, um, no matter if if you've been dating them for six months or five years. You know, you don't you don't want their history to be constant present in your relationship because it makes things really hard when you're trying to build a future, when you're trying to enjoy the present with someone and be present in your relationship and you feel like you're living in the past or you feel like they're living in the past makes it extremely difficult. Uh, but I do think that history has a purpose and I think it has a place and I think that you wouldn't be attracted to that person if they didn't have a history. 
If, if you met someone and they had absolutely no history, if they had no capability of building connections with someone, if they didn't understand the depth and meaning uh, that that experience has, then, you know, it might be a turnoff. So, it's a two-sided coin. Um, I think that I think that mementos definitely hold a different weight with people. Just like Jess was saying, she could care less about pictures, and I happen to really like pictures, and so everyone captures their moments in different ways. And I think that as far as balancing your history with your present, it's really just about respect and transparency. If you are open and honest with the person that you're with, and you allow them to have their history while you have yours, um, and you guys talk about it, and you can do so in a way that, you know, doesn't upset you both, I think that there's no problem with that. I think that in, in your particular situation, it might be difficult because you feel like he has more of a history than you do. And so if you had that history, maybe it wouldn't make you as uncomfortable because currently you feel like you're competing with the history that he has. And, and I, th I think that Melody put it in a great way that you think that you should think of it like that history led him to the awesomeness of you. Because ultimately, he's with you. And if he didn't want to be with you, then he wouldn't. So you can't let, um, you know, you can't let your insecurities after you've talked about them um, from the past affect the future. You, you know, you've just kind of kind of put them in that box along with all those mementos and learn to deal with them. Um, I don't think the history should be ignored by any means. I don't think that you should try and put a cap on what you know about someone's history because it's a part of them. It's it's how they got here. It's how they got to today. And because um, if history is ignored, then it's repeated, right? So. Oh, this topic was tough. There, I feel like we all rambled on for nine or ten minutes and said some key good things. I wish there was like a, a beaver bunch summary button. You know what I mean? Like I wish we could just ramble on into this translator type device and then press summary and it would like spit it out in some nice little coded message <laughs> with you know witty banter and and headshots and all. I, I think that would be cool. So, if anyone knows how to do that, you should let me know. Uh, that's all I have to say about X is I try not to focus on the past. Um, but it, it's there for a reason. Everyone has one. So, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you next week. Happy Friday. Peace.